Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at equivalent fractions. We are in our math journals, uh, pages 77 and 78. On page 77, it says equivalent names for fractions. And what we see here are some pictures. Okay? So, in the first row of pictures, uh, we see uh, one half shaded in, and it says color one half of each circle. So if you look at this circle to the right of the one half fraction, uh, it's split up into six parts. Now I can tell it's split up into six parts because I can see the six pie slices, but we also have the denominator of six at the bottom of my fraction. So what I need to do is I need to shade in half of this circle. I could do that pretty simply by just filling in the half of the circle in blue. And you'll notice that I covered three of the six pie slices. So that means one half is equivalent to three sixths. Okay. Now I could do that again with this fraction. This fraction looks like a bicycle wheel with all the spokes but it's actually a circle cut into twelfths. And I know it's twelfths even without counting because it says so down at the bottom. That's the denominator. There must be twelve parts. So again, I'm going to shade in half of the circle. And by doing so, what I'm going to do here is just color in one, two, three, four, five, six of its... 12 slices, so that tells me again that 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. Okay? Now, you can do the uh, problems for number 2 and number 3 on your own. It's pretty, pretty easy stuff here. But uh, these pictures will help us understand or uh, uh, be able to visualize uh, the equivalent fractions in this next activity, which is the name collection boxes for equivalent fractions. Now, you've probably seen name collection boxes before for, like, uh, you'd get a whole number, like, say, 20, and you'd try to think of all the ways you can uh, arrive at that number. So, for example, 10 plus 10, or 4 times 5, or 21 minus 1 would all give you an answer of 20. This is an exercise in writing down equivalent fractions. So again, I'm starting with one half for number one. But next to one uh, or right under one half, we have a fraction that has four in the denominator. Now I'm, I find it useful to write the equivalent fraction alongside the mystery fraction so that we can look at some relationships. So, for example, I see that 2 is a, a factor of 4 because 2 times 2 gives me 4. So if I multiply the top number by 2 as well, I will determine that 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. Now, you probably knew that already because uh, 2 quarters is 50 cents, and 50 cents is half a dollar. But I'm going to use that same strategy. One half is equivalent to uh, the mystery fraction here. Now this next one has five in the numerator. And in order to get five, I have to multiply one times five. Which means I'm also going to multiply the bottom number two by two times five. That's going to give me ten. Five tenths is equivalent to one half as well. 5 dimes is also 50 cents, which is the same as 2 quarters. Okay. And then over here, we have something over 6. Well, if you just look back at our previous model over here, you can see visually that 3 sixths is equivalent to 1 half. So I don't even have to do any kind of uh, figuring right there. I can just plug in the number. And then I just have to think of what... Uh, with fraction with a numerator of 4 is equivalent to 1 half. Well, again, 1 half, 1 times.
times 4 gives me 4. So 2 times 4 would give me 8. 4 8. And then you'll see a blank right there at the bottom. This is where you can include your own fraction. Now you can simply take the one from this uh, example right here, 6 twelfths, or you can come up with your own. Here's an easy one for you. Okay, 1 half. If I multiply the top and bottom number by 10, okay, I'm going to get a fraction of 10 twentieths. 10 twentieths is basically 1 with a 0 behind it and a 2 with a 0 behind it. Okay? So as you think about equivalent fractions, it's helpful if you use a visual model, but if you start to pick up some of the uh, numeric strategies for finding equivalent fractions, uh, it's, it can go pretty quickly for you too. Again, 1 fourth compared to some fraction out of eighths. Okay, again, I just have to, to look at the, the denominators and compare them. Four and eight, well, I know that four is a uh, um, factor of eight because four times two is eight, or in other words, eight is a multiple of four. So if eight is twice as big as four, I'm going to multiply the top number by two as well. 2 eighths is the equivalent of 1 fourth. Okay? So go ahead and try these uh, name collection boxes. And down at the bottom, you're asked to make up your own, uh, like the ones above. Now, again, uh, you can put any number in these boxes, but, you know, our, uh, our focus right now is fractions. So I would pick some fractional values to put at the top of these boxes. Okay? If you have questions, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Uh, otherwise, we'll talk again soon. Thank you.